One of the most unintuitive things in competitive Pokemon is the phenomenon of certain Pokemon that are just better off not evolving. Many of these Pokemon owe their success to the item Eviolite, which grants not fully evolved Pokemon a 50% boost to their defenses, but this isn't the case for all of them, so today I want to discuss the many Pokemon that outclass their evolutions in the official competitive Pokemon format of VGC. But before we get into that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy these discussion videos and check out the Patreon for even more content and to support my work. Anyways, let's get into it. For the sake of formatting, let's start off with the Pokemon that owe their success to Eviolite. Like I said, this item grants the holder a 50% boost to their defensive stats as long as they're not fully evolved. Keep in mind that this boost isn't to the base stats, but rather the actual stats. For example, if we had a level 50 Eviolite Chansey with max HP and defense, and compare it to a Blissey with the exact same EVs in nature, we would expect the Chansey to have 357 HP, 91 defense, and 189 special defense after the multipliers, where Blissey would have 362 HP, 68 defense, and 156 special defense. While the Blissey would be free to hold an item like Leftovers for passive recovery, the Chansey is far bulkier and would be capable of eating hits from some of the strongest physical attackers and then reliably recover the HP back with Soft Boiled. See the appeal? Since we're already talking about Chansey, let's just start there. While Blissey and Chansey are both not considered super strong picks in VGC, you'd be hard pressed to find a player that would choose Blissey over Chansey for the reasons I stated above. Chansey, however, does see some niche gameplay as an evasion boosting Pokemon, combo with a guard split using high defense stat partner. And before anyone comments, no, evasion moves aren't banned in VGC, just in Smogon formats. In Generation 8 and in previous gens, Chansey would pair with Pokemon like Shuckle to boost its defense stat via guard split. This move averages the defense stats of the user and the target, meaning that if a max defense Shuckle averages its defense stat with Chansey, you'd expect the Chansey to have a defense stat of 186, which then receives the Eviolite stat boost to give it a whopping 279 defense. From that point on, Chansey would spam Minimize to avoid attacks, Soft Boil to recover the HP, and spam Seismic Toss to deal consistent damage to its opponents. While this strategy wasn't the strongest in tournaments due to the high prevalence of things like Taunt, Parish Song, Sacred Sword, and even Oko moves, it is a really funny and gimmicky strat that can net you some minor success. However, a prepared opponent can spot it from a mile away and just hard counter it. Dusclops is yet another defensive wall that has a strong presence in VGC. Despite Dusclops not being fully evolved, it was designed as a fully evolved Pokemon in Generation 3, and then received its evolution in Dusk Noir in Generation 4, so its stats aren't that far off from being viable even without Eviolite. Comparing the two, we can see that Dusclops has 40 HP, 130 defense, and 130 special defense, where Dusk Noir has an increase of 5 to each of those stats, along with a minor speed boost and a huge boost to its attack, taking it from a bad attacker to a mediocre one. It's actually because of these stat boosts that Dusk Noir isn't actually that great. While it is nice to have the attack stat boost, Dusknar isn't hitting anything particularly hard due to its lack of strong reliable ghost stab and weak coverage moves with only that okay attack stat. You'd actually probably get similar damage output by just running Nightshade like you would on Dusclops anyways. The speed also technically makes it a worse Trick Room Pokemon by allowing Pokemon like Amoongus or Glacier to outspeed it under Trick Room, where Dusclops can comfortably underspeed both. Finally, their best recovery move is Pain Split. Similar to Guard Split, this move averages the target's HP stat with the user, allowing the one with less HP to take a bigger share of the pie. Dusknar, admittedly having a negligible HP boost, still technically is worse at this. Speaking of which, it's funny as hell when Dusclops uses Pain Split on a high HP target, cause like even a drop of Snorlax HP is enough to fully heal this little goblin. Eviolite really is the punctuation mark on all of this, because without it, you'd definitely want all of Dusknar's traits along with Leftovers or a Citrus Berry, but the massive defense boost that Eviolite grants Dusclops is far too much for Dusknar to ever get to shine over it. Like, it's not even close, it's pretty sad. Similar to Dusclops is Porygon 2. They serve a similar niche in that they're a fat Trick Room Pokemon with few weaknesses, but Porygon 2 is actually able to output some decent damage and has access to the move Recover. Porygon 2 technically doesn't outclass its evolution Porygon Z so much as it has a niche and PZ doesn't. In short, they're basically two completely different playstyles. PZ is a super powerful special attacker, and Porygon 2 is a soulless desk ornament that just won't die. Porygon 2 has top placements in basically every format that it's had access to the Eviolite item because it can do it all. It's able to set up Trick Room, Wall on Opponents, One Shot Landorus T, provides support with moves like Eerie Impulse, One Shot Landorus T, it only has one weakness, and can run a wide variety of coverage moves. And it can almost one shot Assault Vest Landorus T. Unless it gets a special attack boost from download, in which case it, it one shots Assault Vest Landorus T. 
Honestly, I consider Porygon 2 to be the incinerator of Trick Room setters because of its good damage output, wide move pool, and variety of sets. Also, it has just amazing splash ability on multiple teams. It's really easy to slot this thing onto basically any team. It's probably my favorite of the Evil Light Pokemon. Porygon Z doesn't seem nearly as high of usage, not because Porygon 2 is better than it, but really just because it has heavy competition from other strong special attackers in the game. So Porygon Z doesn't get to shine, similar to how Dust Noir doesn't get to shine. However, I do think you'd have a much easier time using Porygon Z in competitive. Okay, this one always surprises the non-doubles players out there whenever I try to tell them about it, but Clefairy is arguably like the top 10 best VGC Pokemon of all time. Even with Eviolite, it's only barely bulkier than Clefable due to the major stat boost Clefable gains on evolution, but Clefairy has one really important tool that Clefable doesn't have access to, and that's the ability of Friend Guard. This ability makes it so as long as the user is on the field, its partner will only take three quarters of the damage that they would otherwise from all attacks. I feel like that should speak for itself, that's a pretty invaluable tool. Clefairy has been a valuable asset to partners like Calyrex Ice, Mega Kangaskhan, Landorus, Thunderous, and well, basically everything. Along with that, Clefairy has access to just about every tool it would need to excel in this department. It has access to follow me to redirect attacks away from its partner, helping hand to grant a boost to the partner's attacks, icy wind to slow down the opponents, and honestly, most importantly, it has access to protect to keep it sitting on the field even longer. The only thing it really lacks is solid recovery, but that isn't due to not having moves like Moonlight or Life Dew, which it does have access to, but rather that running recovery would mean it would have to get rid of a more important tool like Helping Hand or Follow Me. Clefairy has had more top cut placements than anyone would expect from this thing if they had never played VGC before, and it's honestly one of the best Pokemon of all time. Okay, while Murkrow will usually run Eviolite in the current format, I actually don't consider it an Eviolite reliant Pokemon due to how often it's seen great results with the Focus Sash. Honestly, the thing that really sets it apart from Honchkrow is access to the ability Prankster. Murkrow hits a solid speed tier at 91, meaning that it not only has Tailwind priority, but it also has the potential to naturally outspeed many metagame threats and smack them with a foul play using their own attack stat. Murkrow also has access to a wide variety of support tools that allow it to contribute to the team beyond that Tailwind. These include Haze to remove stat boosts from Pokemon like Dondozo or Abelidum Azumarill, or even hazing your own Golden Go to allow it to make it rain without the stat drop, Sunny Day to activate Protosynthesis boosts on Fluttermane and Great Tusks, or even Icy Wind to lower the speed stats of other fast Pokemon like Iron Bundle. Murkrow, much like its ability implies, is just full of tricks. Honchkrow, on the other hand, while it does have access to all these tools without Prankster, isn't able to make up for it with its snowballing attack stat with Moxie, and despite being the namesake of this channel, it doesn't really see any real competitive usage in VGC. Murkrow in VGC 2023 specifically has had multiple top cuts and is widely regarded as a powerful support Pokemon all around. It's probably going to be bad once Whimsicott drops though, since Whimsicott can do basically everything Murkrow does just a little better. The final one of these may shock you, so please avert your eyes if you're a Lucario fan. Riolu in Generation 8 VGC was regarded as pretty viable. This is entirely due to two tools that it had access to combined with Prankster. Riolu had access to the moves Coaching and Copycat. While Copycat is not a very common move in competitive Pokemon, when combined with Max Guard based off of Trick Room and Prankster, Riolu was capable of setting up Trick Room for its partner Pokemon like Calyrex with priority. That should send chills down your spine if you don't know how Trick Room works. This is because despite the fact Trick Room would almost always go last in basically any turn it's used on, when it's turned into Max Guard, it gains priority. Riolu would then almost always move next, copycatting the most recently used move, technically being Trick Room because Max Guard was based off of Trick Room, and thus setting up Trick Room with priority. While this did waste an important Dynamax turn, Riolu would then prankster coaching to give Calyrex an attack and defense boost and nearly guarantee a KO from one of Calyrex's powerful max moves. This would also allow for bulkier Calyrex to guarantee to live a Behemoth Blade from Zacian, which was typically a hard counter to Calyrex Ice. There was solid counterplay to this in just spamming a faster priority move so Riolu would copycat that instead, but Riolu did see mild success regardless of this. Compared to Lucario's usage, Riolu greatly outshined its evolution, making Riolu a rare, viable baby Pokemon. But those are the Pokemon that outclassed their evolved forms. Let me know if I missed one. I, I really can't think of any right now. I, I honestly I just wanted to make this video because I thought it'd be fun. If you knew about at least a few of these, that means you're at least a little familiar with competitive Pokemon, but there's definitely a portion of the audience that had no idea that Riolu was viable at one point. And that just goes to show stats aren't everything in competitive Pokemon, especially when abilities and items do so much to contribute to a Pokemon's viability. 
Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to support my content, be sure to contribute to the Patreon. You'll gain access to bonus content as well as team write-ups that I make for my tournament teams. Another way to support me is going to be to leave a super thanks, but above all else, a comment and a like do wonders for pushing my content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.